Figma auto layout is not as complicated as you think. It's literally just smart groups. So what do I mean by smart group? If I press Control G, do I just create a dumb group? And if I press Shift A, it's magically a, a smart group. Well, pretty much, yes. <laughs> but the difference is when you sort of use auto layout to, let's say, group a, a bunch of squares in a container, and you sort of change something within those, con like the elements that you've grouped together with auto layout, it sort of accommodates for, for that change. And let's say width, and the container sort of expands with um, with the changes that you've done to the elements that's, that are within. And if you want to add elements, then again, the container sort of expands or contracts based on the changes that you do within the group. But it, in a regular group, um, it just doesn't do anything. It doesn't react. It's not dynamic. And then you have to sort of manually adjust things and constantly take care of like the spacing, the padding, and like the gap between each and every element that that's within that group. But I think to make you understand Autoreot a little bit better, we'll take three examples ranging from like beginner to advanced and follow along. If you don't have Figma open up or opened up right now, then just go open up Figma, follow along. And because this is literally the best way that you can learn something is just recreate something that you watch. And those three examples would just be like beginner, intermediate, advanced. And that should give you like a grasp of how to use auto layout using practical examples that you can see um, how the tool works. So let's jump in. All right, so here we have three components, basically something that's very simple and which is just a button. And this is literally the simplest auto layout that you can have. Um, and then a sort of an intermediate version of auto layout where you do have the button and then you have something to the left that is again two nested auto layouts within a bigger auto layout. And then a final component, which is the card component. And I don't know, this is like something I just quickly came up with. Let's, it's for like a productivity app, maybe, um, that, you know, you can initiate a project and then you can send invites uh, to people to join your specific project. I don't know, it's something very quick, but the idea is to sort of get you started with how to design using auto layout. So let's start with just this very simple button. And we can literally just type in like grab your text tool and type in invite or like let's say send invite and this is going to be the first thing and then grab the text tool again and just say plus that's going to be the icon um, so now what we can do is what, what did i use poppins regular 12 okay poppins regular 12 and Let's make this into like a medium or something. And so I want to put these two into an auto layout. So you can simply select them both and click Shift and A. And there you go. You have an auto layout. Um, you can use the same fill color I've, I've used up here, which is just this blue. And um, just go to selection color and change it to white. And there you have a button, but it doesn't look like a button right now because it needs some padding. So what you need to do is add padding from up here and this sort of controls uh, the, the the padding the vertical padding and let's say I want eight vertical padding and 16 horizontal padding and you can also control the gap and as you can see like you can even go negative here and uh, that sort of controls the gap between the two elements that you've grouped in auto layout and so um, I'll give a padding of 16 and we can go to, a, to the corner and round it, give it a radius of, let's say, eight, maybe. Okay. So there you go. You made yourself your first button using auto layout. And the beauty of this is uh, it changes based on the content that's inside. So invite to server. And as you can see, the button is dynamically sort of um, moving based on the content. You can even add like, I don't know. I don't know why you would want to add three icons, but you get the point. Um, so there's that. So we'll call this button. Now moving on to the next uh, component, which is sort of like a footer component to the card where you have the button and let's say another button. Uh, so this is the main button and this is the secondary button. So I'm just going to grab the icon that I have here. 
just okay so i have the icon here and then i want to include copy to or copy link to server and what color did i use here this one okay so i'll just use the same color and just decrease the opacity and now we want to put this into its own auto layout again select both uh, sh um, shift and a auto layout 16 pixels of gap I don't need no padding and we'll just say secondary button and I'll just have the button here I'm just gonna literally just drag it and send invites and there you go you have yourself the two components that you need to make the footer and I select both of them which is an auto layout and another auto layout and just click shift and a and it groups it into its own auto layout. Now, to give myself padding here, um, I will also give this a fill of white, okay? And 16, again, 16 padding, uh, horizontal and 16 vertical. And let's say I want to have it at a width of 450 pixels. So if I want to, let's say, make it the same width as the um, component above, it's sort of, as you can see, the gap stays this, in the same way that it is. And um, you can also see that now, instead of hug, it is now fixed width. So this is one thing that you'll be using a lot. Um, sometimes you do need the frame to be at a fixed width. So let's say we want 450 here. Um, but we also want this to sort of react to, to, my, uh, to its parent component. So what you can do is you can go to the spacing mode and make it into space between. And as you can see, the gap right here is now set to auto. So when you resize this, it sort of keeps one um, end of the auto layout fixed, one element fixed to the left and one element fixed to the right. And there is that. You can also give it a corner radius if you want. And we'll call this the footer section. And there you go. This is the second exercise done. Final one is going to be a little tricky, but it's not difficult. Um, so let's let's dissect it. So here we do have three auto layouts uh, right on top of each other. And then this one has two auto, layout, auto layouts inside or two elements inside. And this is to also two auto layouts laid on top of each other. Uh, that also has an auto layout right next to each other and an auto layout um, <laughs> group, uh, basically um, uh, grouping them as well. So let's dissect everything uh, one by one. So share project details. And it's subheading. And I'll adjust the size of the text here. and the color as well. And then I'm done with the heading and the subheading. I'm gonna select both of them, Shift A, and we have our first auto layout ready. So this is called heading, right? Um, now I wanna have the X icon right here. So I'm just gonna, you could just make this really quickly using a pen tool. I'm, I'm clicking Shift by the way, and then Escape and then shift again to drag out these lines in a perfect 45 degree angle. And there you go. You have yourself your close button icon. And now you want to group both of them into their own auto layout. And you can just have space between as well. So that means when you sort of, um, you know, move things around, uh, it stays fixed on the left and right. We'll just call this header. Um, now we are going to work on uh, the next section, which is people with access section. So I am going to say people with access. I will say this is 12. I'll use the same color. And 
this is a very good part right here. So we can create this EF sort of avatar uh, thing with auto layout. So let's say we have an avatar that does not have a picture. So we can say the initials of effect, which is EF, just as an example, and then click Shift and A and give it this uh, color that we have here. So fill it with this color and um, simply give it a corner radius of a very high number. As you can see, it's like sort of an oval shape, which we don't want. We want it to be a perfect circle. So in that case, let's just give it a fixed height and a fixed width. And this is something that you will be using as well a lot. Um, so if I want to say 40 pixels and 40 pixels off width and height to have this sort of perfect um, circle and then align it to the middle. And there you go, you have yourself the avatar basically so this is the avatar and as you can see like everything when you dissect it you can sort of do like amazing things like if you dissect it into smaller and smaller things so effect design effect of design and then the email and this goes down to 10 and this to 50% opacity. Now we can group these two into their own auto layout and let's just give it a negative a gap here. So negative two, just to bring everything together and we'll call this name details. And then let's group name and avatar into their own auto layout as well. And as you can see, like we can control the spacing. So I'm just gonna say 16 pixels and we'll say this person. And now we want to have this sort of like drop down indication here that saying that this person is the owner of this project card or whatever. So owner, and then let's create the chevron quickly with the pen tool, clicking shift again. And there we go. We have this set into its own auto layout as well. Uh, we can give the selection color to be this. And just making sure that I am using the right font. So owner indication, and let's make this into its own auto layout. So again, make the spacing mode into space between. Right. So now let's group this and this, actually let's group these first. So we have an auto layout here. So this is grouped and this will call this like main, main section. And group the header and main into its own auto layout and we have sort of like the the card if we give this a fill you'll understand so fill there we go and we can then give uh, padding everywhere so let's say 24 and 24 and give this eight and there we go we have um, our two component uh, auto layouts within the card component so this is the card as you can see this is not the same width as this which is fine um, what we need to do first is give our card a fixed width so i'll say 475 pixels is the width of my card and then just select both of this and go for fill container and it sort of it will fill the container that it um you know it has so instead of like it being a fixed width it would just fill the container of the card and as you can see this is what happens which exact which is exactly what we want um, this is also set to fill but we also need to set this to fill as well and there you go you have this section uh, now we can take this footer as well and just put it in here um, and as you can see, since this has a fixed uh, ho um, horizontal resizing attribute, so we will go to fill container and we will take, we'll get rid of the padding everywhere and the fill since it's already uh, right there. And if we want to add uh, this stroke up here, we can give this um, a padding top of, let's say, 16 and a stroke of top uh, get rid of the border radius and 
make this into let's say 20% or even 15% opacity. And there we go. Uh, we can also mess around with the spacing between this. So let's say we want 23 here. And we can also say, um, we can increase the padding if you want to let's say 27 and 27. But yeah, you do get the point. Uh, we are basically done with um, with this tutorial. But yeah, you can even go into like finer details here. And let's say you want to offset offset the size here of this um, by eight pixels. So eight pixels and eight pixels, and that sort of pushes it by eight pixels. And you can do the same thing here. So eight, and that sort of offsets it a little bit. Just to have this stroke up here um, sort of offset to the right and to the left. All right, and we are done with this um, rather short tutorial. I did cover almost everything um, in auto layout. There are some other things that are not covered, such as um, uh, absolute positioning and other like minor details, but you know, I'll cover them in a later video. Um, if you find this video helpful or, um, you know, or enjoyable, please leave a like, leave a comment. If you have any questions, I'll answer them. And um, if this video uh, gets positive feedback, I will be uh, publishing another video with auto layout to create something like this right here. And sort of like build like a mobile screen just using auto layout. It's going to be a little bit advanced, but we can get it done. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.